Hello friends, I'm Tim Wildsmith, and in this video we're going to be taking a closer look at the all-new GPC Bible from Good Publishing Company. All right, it's time for the full review of the GPC Bible. If you haven't seen it already, I did an unboxing video with this Bible that was a ton of fun. I was, I was honestly kind of shocked by this when I first opened it. I didn't even know what to think. I've just never seen anything like this. And so you definitely want to check that out. That video actually is the, the most views I've got in the shortest amount of time on my channel before. And I think that's because this Bible has been talked about. There's been some news stories about it. People have been chatting about it because it's a it's a red $300 Bible from a new publisher that not a lot of people have seen anything like this before. So if you're not familiar with the Good Publishing Company, brand new company, the creatives behind it are guys like John Buscemi and Tony Arcabascio, these really creative New York guys who are known in the fashion world and things like that. Um, also people like Pastor Chris Durso from Saints Church in New York who kind of uh, added their creative input to this Bible. And from a pastor's perspective, I think that's really cool. And um, they saw the video, the unboxing video, heard from their folks. They actually connected me. I got to interview the the, the people who designed this Bible, the people who manufactured this Bible, ask all the questions that I had about all of the different specs and stuff. So I'm going to walk you through that in just a sec second, kind of my normal review process. But I did want to answer the question, which I, I know I brought this up in the video, was is this Bible worth $300? And you saw in the video, I was kind of struggling to wrap my mind around it because one of the things that I saw in the comments was people were like, comparing it to premium Bibles like Schuyler and Allen and Cambridge. And that's what I was doing in my head as I was opening it. I was thinking about other Bibles that I've paid north of 200 bucks for, and then like, how does this compare? And, and what I realized after I sat with this for a few hours was like, and what I was trying to wrap my heads around is like, it really doesn't compare to that. They're, they're not the same thing. I, I would guess that the folks at GPC have probably never even heard of Schuyler or Allen. Like they were not trying to create a Bible that was like entering the, the established premium Bible market. No, they were trying to do something totally different, totally creative, a, a modern version of this. They like things like using Eric Hayes, the artist in New York to do the lettering of this Bible. It's just, it's a totally different concept. And so you kind of have to take your brain out of the, uh, the mindset of comparing it to things that are already out there and just kind of soak in what it is, which is a very unique, different, modern, yeah, it's a hype beast kind of Bible, which is trying to do something different and do something unique with the Bible. And one of the things that Pastor Chris Durso said is that this is the kind of Bible that gets into places and spaces that the Bible might not normally get into. And I love that. I love that idea. I love that this is maybe the Bible that, you know, you go to the, the I'm a Hampton Inn person, right? I, I like the Hampton Inn because it's comfortable, the beds are good, and, and they get free waffles, you know, the next morning. You get a free waffle at the Hampton Inn. But like if you go to Hampton Inn, you, you open that, that night, nightstand, you're going to get a Gideon Bible. That's, I'm, I'm cool that the Gideons have done that. There's Bibles all over it. This is the kind of Bible that you'd expect to see in like the standard hotel in New York City. Just, it's a totally different ball game, a totally different world. And for some people, I get it. That's not your style. You look at this and you're like, I don't want a red Bible. I don't want a massive Bible that big. Absolutely. But others of you probably watch this video, watch the unboxing video, and you're like, that is cool. And if that's your instinct, like my wife, she came home. My wife, Becca, is a graphic designer. She's a painter. She's a creative. She came home a few hours after I did that unboxing video. She saw this thing and immediately was like, oh, yes, this is awesome. She, she got it. It just it made sense. So, so yeah, I don't think this is for everybody, but I do think it's really cool. And, and in answer to the question, is this Bible worth $300? Here's my answer. I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to give you two answers. Answer number one, absolutely. I, I totally think that it's worth that money. Now that I've heard about the process that went into making it, the materials, the design, the craftsmanship, all of that, and then you step back from that and think about the creative spirit and the ideas that went into this, I totally think it's worth the money. Part two is, that's such, a, such an interesting conversation. And I've kind of had a little bit of it here, just talking about how we think about what the Bible is and being doing something new with it and being creative with it and what that means to be able to get the Bible into new places and new spaces. I think that's an interesting conversation to have. And so I'm not going to do that right here because this is a Bible review, but I am going to invite my wife, Becca, to come on the channel next week. And we're going to have a dialogue, a conversation about this Bible and other Bibles and what it means for creativity in the Bible to kind of overlap. I think that's an interesting discussion to have and I want to have it and I'm glad that this Bible has kind of sparked some of that conversation in my household and, and now we get to have it 
on the YouTube channel. So, but right now I want to give you a closer look at this. I want to tell you about the paper and about the fonts and all that stuff. And I have all that information for you. So without further ado, this is a closer look at the GPC Bible. Okay, I know I've already done an unboxing video, but I got to show you, you this one more time if you haven't seen it already. So you open this thing up and, and, and the, <laughs> the packaging is so fascinating. I talked to Steve from the Vertical Group, which is the, the company in New York who, who did this entire project. And it was so cool to talk to him about the packaging and just the, their desire to have these cool unboxing moments. So first of all, you get in here and you get this little card that just, it's like a sleeve that says, do not be afraid with the GPC logo on there. But then you open this up and you get information about the Bible. So you can freeze frame that if you want and see the, the, the note from them. But then also if you wanted to give this as a gift, which I think it does make a really cool gift idea, you've got that in there. But then as Steve was telling me, they, they wanted to have a, a, an unboxing moment for people where they felt like, check this out. He said it was like un opening a doorway. And look at that. And the Bible is in there. It's just, it's so, it's so cool. But also he said, we really wanted to make sure this thing arrived safely. So we had to figure out a way to do like a really great box that was going to protect this Bible in transit, but also had a, a really special moment for people when they were getting it. And I think that, I think that they, they hit a home run. Let's set this aside real quick. Just so you can see just like the attention to detail. I mean, very, very impressive again with their logo. And then you get John 620 there, but he said to them, it is I do not be afraid. So great. Let me reset here real quick and we'll get to the Bible. Okay, so the second really cool moment is this uh, paper slip case that you open up. And as you saw again in the unboxing video, it's like this big cross that you can stretch out. It opens up. It's like so great. I can't even get it on to the camera, but you pull this away and it says, do not be afraid. John 6, 20. Such a cool way to open this Bible. And then yes, you get the Bible itself. Uh, it's massive, it's red, it, it, looks, it looks fantastic on the outside. It's like just really, really sharp. So what you're getting here on the outside, this is a Senzo soft touch cover with a very lovely Pantone color for the red. It looks really good up close. It feels nice, it's, it's sleek. And then you have gold foil. This is a Kurz gold foil on the spine. So for the cross and the NIV right there, really clean otherwise. And then the Holy Bible. This is a design from Eric Hayes, who's a New York City artist that's really well known, particularly for hand lettering and things like that. So he did this uh, frontispiece for the entire Bible, as well as the lettering that you'll see throughout that I'll show you. I'm going to pull the red ribbons out here. So everything's red, y'all. It's got red ribbons. These are Italian Grosgrain ribbons that they hand lettered. So you have one. Let me see if I can get there. There you go. One says Old Testament. The other says New Testament. Isn't that rad? It's very sturdy, it's big, but then they had they went and had the, the pages hand painted. So if you're if you are used to premium Bibles and you have that like gold, um, the art gilding, that sort of thing, this is actually painted red and it looks sharp. I mean you can see the texture in there, but it's really, really clean and well done. As far as size goes, this is a big sturdy Bible. It is eight inches wide, it's ten inches tall, and it's about two and a half inches thick. When you when you get the whole thing in there so yeah it's got that big coffee table kind of heirloom family style bible vibe um, but it looks really sharp it's bold it's red it does as far as the 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 binding is a sewn binding i talked to steve at vertical about that just like the process they went into he, they used red thread to sew the signatures of this bible together which is such a cool thing i'll show you that when we get inside you can kind of see it in some of the pages but just overall the the outside look and the feel yeah Super bold, modern, unlike any Bible I've ever seen, but it's just really, really sharp. So opening this up, I noticed that you can see there's kind of this uh, lined pattern. Can you see that? Like almost a seersucker lined pattern on the paper that matches um, the, the packaging when you first open the box for the packaging. So you get a couple of blank sheets up here. There's that cross logo. I didn't have the word for this. Becca told me that this is called vellum. So they use this lovely vellum paper. So you see the frontispiece there, but then you open it up, just looks sharp. I had a really awesome FaceTime chat with a guy named Rory in England, and Rory, uh, is, his company's called Besnowed, and he is the typesetter for this Bible. He did the entire layout of the, the interior design, working back and forth with the folks in America. What a really awesome guy who 
was really excited to do this project. He loves the Bible and just did a great job with this. So you get the, the information about the translation up front, kind of very standard with most Bibles. Little note there about GPC. Vellum again. So here's a little note about Eric Hayes and the calligraphy that's designed in this Bible. That's his signature logo there. Another piece of vellum. And then I love this page because it's red here. It looks really sharp. Okay, Old Testament. Again, the gold foil comes back on these front pages. This is a really, really thick textured paper starting this. So what I learned about this Bible is that the paper is a 50-pound uncoated paper. It's Italian. It's from a company called Rollins. 50 pound, for those of you who, who've heard me talk about the GSM of other Bibles, that's north of 70 GSM. It's a very, very thick, very opaque paper. One of the things you think about when reading the Bible is that you're often distracted by the words on the other side of the page, kind of ghosting through. You don't worry about that at all with this Bible. It's very, very clean on the page. It's really easy to read. You see the format is a two-column text with the the textual notes out here in the margins, this, the page has lots of room to breathe. I love what Rory did with the design of this because you have all this space where you can take notes. If you are using this as a coffee table, family Bible, you can write your notes in here as you're reading and studying. Or if your kid says something that you're like, oh, I want to remember what my kid said about that Bible story, you write that in here. Really comfortable to read. He used a font called GT America. The, the main text of Scripture is GT America in an eight-point font. It's really crisp. It's easy to read. It's spaced well. I had a long chat with Rory about the ins and outs of typography and typesetting. It was so fascinating to hear all of the time and the energy that went into this and how he um, made decisions and processed and worked back and forth with the folks at GPC to kind of just land on the right design that had a look that was modern, but also traditional and felt like a Bible. So it was like stepping it up and moving it into a, a modern territory, but also felt like a Bible that you would be familiar with. I also love that they use the NIV translation just because it feels like a good fit for kind of that modern, but also a, a very established, well-known translation. It's pretty straightforward, y'all. It's, it's like a nice, solid Bible that once you open it up and start digging in, it, it clicks. It makes sense. When you get to um, passages that are, are poetic, like in the Psalms, really nice verse-by-verse -verse format, Everything's spaced really well. It, it, feels, it feels like it reads really well and really familiar, but then obviously when you're back in the, the paragraph form, forms of the, of the Bible, you get a pretty traditional paragraph format. A couple things to note that I noted in the, um, in the unboxing video was that this paper right here is kind of this antique white in the Old Testament. Watch this. When I flip to the New Testament, it goes to a bright white. So that's the bright white, antique white. I love that. It's just like the, the, the vibe of the Old Testament versus the New Testament. It just allows you to kind of go somewhere, somewhere differently. And I love that's the, the touches in this Bible that I think are really cool. The, the creative, the, the attention to detail, the thought. It's just different. It's different and it, and it works um, really well. So when we get to the end of the Old Testament, finish up Malachi, flipping over, you get another one of these pages. The, the texture, I can't describe how to, this, this, this texture, this paper, it feels a lot like the cover. It's, it's, it's like beautiful texture, it's soft, the gold foil on the inside looks really sharp. Get in the New Testament, there's that bright white. I, I left a little um, note here. See that red thread? <laughs> so the signatures are all sewn together. So each signature is like the, 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 the pages, the, the, each one of these is a signature, these like groupings of paper. And so they used red thread, which I mean, they didn't have to do that, but they did. Like that's that's so cool. And then obviously, this is a red letter text. So if you're going to have a red letter Bible, it needs to be this Bible. Obviously, this big red Bible needs to be a red letter Bible. And so I think it's really sharp. The, the color here really pops. What this Bible does is it makes me read differently. And I think that's cool. I think it's cool to just kind of be challenged to, to go somewhere different as you're reading through these really familiar texts. I love how big and open this is and, and how great it looks. So um, getting to the end of the Bible... When we get to the end of Revelation, this Bible isn't one that comes with maps and a concordance and things like that. That's not really the, the vibe behind it. So you get to the end of Revelation 22. Right here you have a quick call of fun with all the, the names of the people who worked on this thing. Really, really awesome. I hope that this is not the last time I see this. I hope that they bring out other editions, other colors, other translations. It's It's... It's absolutely stunning. I mean, it's just, it's big, it's bold. As I said earlier, it's totally different than what you'd expect from a Bible. And I, I kind of love that about it.
So there you have it. That's a closer look at the GPC Bible. I have a feeling that we are going to be seeing more from the Good Publishing Company, and so far I, I love this Bible and I, I love the look of it. Um, but I would like to know what you have to say. So definitely leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this Bible. If you have questions, leave those in the comments and I'll get back to you. As always, you can check the video description. I'll put links to where you can purchase one of these and anything else that I mentioned in the video. And you definitely want to check out BibleReviewBlog.com, my website, where I've got a full write-up of the GPC Bible as well as a bunch of great photos there for you to check out. Definitely check out Bible Review Blog also on Instagram and Facebook. We've got a great community out there that's talking about the Bible. And while you're here on YouTube, hit that like button for me. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I've got a bunch of great Bible content already created, and I have a lot more on the way. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.